Hi, and welcome to the Azure ISD On Demand Sessions, where you can learn about the latest, greatest announcements and updates on storage, compute, and networking. As part of this session, we will deep dive on application development and Kubernetes-based workloads. My name is Vaibhava Ramadas, and I'm a product manager in Azure Storage for Containers. With me today is Jason Valerie, who's also a product manager on Azure Storage. Azure Storage provides cloud storage that is durable, highly available, and massively scalable. We offer a wide range of storage services to handle any of your data needs, so you can choose the storage type that best matches your workload. We have three key types of storage. One is block storage that is served by Azure Disks. Next up is object storage that is provided by Azure Blobs and our data lake capabilities. And last but not least, we have file storage that is provided by Azure Files and Azure NetApp Files. When we think about application development, we see three common patterns. First, we're going to talk about containerized workloads that is leveraging the agility and scale of containers. Second, how you're going to use storage to enhance your web and mobile applications, so whether these are new or migrated from on-premises to the cloud. And then driving innovation with serverless computing and how storage can play a foundational role in these applications. First, let's start with containers. Azure offers a plethora of options for you to run containers. These include Azure Kubernetes Service, Azure Red Hat OpenShift, Azure Container Instances, as well as Cluster API for custom Kubernetes deployments. Over the last few years, we are seeing a significant increase in the stateful workloads that are run on Kubernetes at production scale on Azure. These include databases like MongoDB and Postgres, big data applications like Cassandra, machine learning workloads like Apache Spark or Kubeflow, and other applications like Kafka, CMS technology, CI CD systems, and so on. These workloads use different types of storage, including block, file, and object storage options that are exposed via CSI drivers that are deployed and configured on the Kubernetes environments. When it comes to these stateful workloads, there are four key workload considerations to think about. One is resiliency of your application as well as the infrastructure. Your storage plays a key role by providing the best data durability in the cloud. We also offer capabilities like Xera storage that allows you to have cross-zonal resiliency. Second, performance, scale, and of course, price performance, options that allow you to meet your workload needs. So whether you need sub-millisecond latency or extremely high throughput, storage can always support you with your different workload requirements. Next up is operational simplicity so that you can manage your environments on an ongoing basis you know, after deployment. These could include capabilities like automatic scaling, data protection, as well as integrated monitoring. And last but not least, built-in security so that you can use encryption at rest and encryption in transit or ensure that you always have secure access to your endpoints. We talked about a number of different storage services and all of these storage services can be used with containers on Azure. Let's look at these one by one. Azure Disks offers block storage that it can be used to run databases like MySQL uh, or applications like Cassandra or Kafka. In addition to that, Azure Files offers fully managed file shares that you can use with both your Windows and Linux-based containers. These can be used for shared configuration or user workspaces, which typically required read-write access or multi-pod access. Azure Blobs provide a unique mechanism to allow you to mount them as file shares uh, via either BlobFuse or NFS version 3. Now, these can be used for analytics-based workloads or HPC workloads, as well as machine learning applications. And last but not least, we enable Azure NetApp Files, which is a NetApp offering in Azure but offered as a native service in Azure. Now, you may be running NetApp environments on-premises with your container-based applications. You can now do this on Azure and leverage Azure NetApp files via the NetApp Trident drivers. In the last one to two months, we've announced a number of key capabilities on container storage. First up is the general availability of the CSI drivers for Azure Disk 
Azure Files, as well as Azure Blobs in AKS. These include critical functionality like volume snapshots, as well as support for the zone redundant storage. In addition to this, you can also leverage larger file shares with Azure Files, as well as take advantage of the price drop and reservations for Azure Files. Not only that, we've announced the general availability of NFS 3.0 on Azure Blobs, as well as the preview of NFS 4.1 on Azure Files. As an example of one of the announcements, let's take a look at zone redundant disks. Xerus disks can be used with multi-zone AKS clusters, and it synchronously replicates data to all of the different zones in a specific region. This provides you cross-zonal resiliency for your application. You can try this out today in four regions, including West US 2, West Europe, North Europe, and France Central. Now let's take a look at this in action. Here you have a Kubernetes cluster that is deployed on West US 2, and that's currently running Kubernetes version 1.21. Let's quickly go over to the node poles and take a look. Here we see that we have an node pole which has three nodes um, that are up and running. Um, quickly looking at the node pool, we also see that it's configured to deploy nodes to zone one, zone two, and zone three in West US 2. Coming back, let's take a quick look at the workloads. Choosing the stable sets tab, we see that a stable set is currently running in this environment, which is a MySQL application. This particular stable set has a uh, pod that's running, which is MySQL zero. And this specific pod um, is running on node two within that agent pool that we just looked at. This also is leveraging a persistent volume with a PVC of data MySQL zero. Let's take a quick look at this volume. So if I do a kubectl we'll get PVC, I will see that this volume is bound to the application and this is the, um, the actual PB that is sitting behind the PVC. Now, quickly looking at this PB, we see that it is a disk as we expect, as well as it is using the disk skew premium SSD CRS. Given that the pods are running on agent pool node two, we see that this, is, uh, this PVC is managed by uh, node two as well. Now, what we're going to do is have this pod move from one node to another, which basically means it's actually moving from one zone to another. And to illustrate this quickly, what we're going to do is issue a drain operation on the node, which will cordon off um, node two on which this application is currently running and move the pod over to a different node in the cluster. We see here that the pods are getting evicted since the node was cordoned off, and it will now move the pod to another node in the cluster. Now, if we refresh the specific pod, we see that the update's flowing through, the, uh, the pod is terminating, um, and it will refresh and come back live on another node in the cluster. Okay, we see that the pod was evicted and now has moved to node three. Now what we expect now is that the volume that was available is now going on node two is now gonna be available on node three. So you see that the same volume is now available instantaneously on node three. Now just to summarize what we looked at here, we have a multi-zone AKS cluster with pods running in a single zone. We then move that pod from one zone to another, and the volume instantaneously shows up in the other zone. We are able to achieve this by using zone redundant disks that synchronously replicate the storage across all of the zones in the region. Now, in addition to platform capabilities, we have a number of integrated ISV solutions from our partner ecosystem. These solutions provide storage management and orchestration for SQL applications, as well as in-cluster, cross-cluster, and cross-region disaster recovery with application awareness. 
These solutions are tightly integrated with Azure Storage to ensure that you have a seamless end-to-end -end experience when you leverage them on Azure. Now with that, I will hand over to Jason so we can learn more about modern apps as well as our serverless technologies. Thanks, Vaigova, for that great overview of stateful containers on Azure Storage. Now we're going to transition gears and look at how we can leverage Azure Blob Storage to build, deploy, and manage your modern web and mobile applications. I want to review with you the landscape of services that exist in Azure that support just that. App Services is a fully managed environment for the service side portion of your application. You can deploy code that's written in common languages like .NET, Java, Python, Go, and many others, and host them in a fully managed way. And then there's static web apps. Static web apps provides you the capability to host HTML, as well as your media assets like images and videos, and even client-side applications built in JavaScript with popular frameworks like Angular and React. We have a content delivery network, which can sit in front of these applications and allow you to scale quickly to millions of users. And we have API management, which provides you a gateway that you can put in front of your APIs to publish them out to your end users. In addition to those capabilities, we also have services that you can use to search and enrich your applications based on the data within them. Cognitive search allows you to index the contents of your files and search through them. Cognitive services allows you to process those files and enrich them with an additional intelligence. And maps and communication services provide modules that you can include in your application that allow your users to have more interaction. Well, Azure Blob Storage is foundational to all of those services. It provides the scalability, the durability, and the high availability of your data to make all of those services work. It provides you best-in-class security features to ensure that you're compliant with the most strict industry and governmental regulations. And it does that in a cost-effective way with pay-as-you-go billing that scales with you as your application grows. On top of all of those capabilities is a comprehensive data management framework, which allows you to apply policy and get the most from the platform. This is foundational to the most demanding workloads on Azure. But in addition, we have some unique capabilities that are worth looking at. Our premium blob storage tier gives you the lowest latency object storage platform in the cloud, which is crucial for your interactive applications. You don't want your users waiting for their data to load. We also have point in time restore, which allows you to roll back your entire data estate to a known good in time with just a few clicks when the unexpected occurs. And lastly, all of this is seamlessly integrated with all of those great platform services without requiring you to wire up custom and complex integrations. Now, how do you get your data to Azure Blob Storage? We provide for you storage SDKs. These are code solutions that allow that are built by Microsoft and open source in the common languages, again, like .NET, Java, Python, and others, that allow you to take advantage of all the best practices of our storage platform. But if that's too much, you can interact with our platform using just simple HTTP calls. Put and get allow you to upload and download files, and you can even do that from the command line with curl. And when you're looking to migrate your data, AZ Copy provides you an end-to-end -end data movement application similar to RoboCopy. We have PowerShell commandlets and Azure CLL binaries that allow you to insert the data movement into your scripts for deployment or other common tasks. And if you want to use your interface on top of all of it, Storage Explorer provides you a great way to go and manage your data and explore it. In addition, even the Azure portal makes it simple for you to upload and download data directly to your Azure Blob Storage account. With that, I want to take a minute to look at some of the common web and mobile patterns we've seen with our customers. There's no shortage of the imagination of our customers, but I want to really focus in on three common scenarios that we regularly see. In addition to the obvious of just storing and serving your data and fronting it with a CDN, some emerging patterns include directly uploading to Blob Storage from any internet-connected device. This could be a sensor or camera, this could be a mobile application, or this could even be a retail or point of sale device. With our secure delegated authentication and authorization model, you can upload directly to Blob Storage and know that it's been done by a trusted client. And once that data is in Blob Storage, you can use our multi-protocol access to process and enrich it. In addition to cognitive search and cognitive services, 
you can access your data with any application that supports the NFS v3 protocol. Or with our Hadoop driver for HDFS, you can access any of the analytics tools in the Hadoop ecosystem, including Spark and Hive. I want to discuss one customer that did just that, Chipotle. When you go to chipotle.com to order a burrito, you're experiencing a single page application that was hosted inside of blob storage and fronted with our CDN. And when you go to order that burrito, all of the service side logic is in a .NET core application running in app services. And then when you go into the store to order a burrito at Chipotle, those point of sale devices are uploading your order to a blob storage account so that Chipotle can have a single pane of glass to the overall health of their business. I want to spend a little bit more time going deeply into cognitive search. Azure Cognitive Search provides the capability to index the contents of your files and search them. It has indexers that are aware of common file types, like images and videos, as well as Office document formats like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. It can extract from them text and other metadata, like who created the file, and even apply optical character recognition on your scanned documents. One customer that used these capabilities to build a compliance and archive solution is the accounting firm PwC. PwC needed a solution to make sure that they were compliant with industry regulations, and they used cognitive search to analyze all of their documents and the rich capabilities of blob storage to enforce the industry rules that they need to be compliant with. Now, I want to shift gears a little bit to serverless. Serverless is a capability that allows you to loosely couple your applications. But what does that mean? It means taking small components of the application and running them in their own separate runtime that can scale based on user demand. Blob storage is great at this. You can have events that trigger these serverless functions by when an object is created, deleted, or other events that happen to your data natively. Those get routed to an event router, and then the runtime processes them. In the Azure serverless landscape, we have a variety of services that you can use to help you accomplish this. Azure Functions is the runtime where you can deploy your .NET code, Node, Java, or other code to a managed environment that will respond to those events. Logic Apps provides you some pre-built modules that allow you to compose them together in a low-code way to solve business challenges. And Event Grid manages the routing to these different runtimes. Azure Container Instances allows you to deploy containers to Azure without managing the underlying infrastructure like AKS. It is perfect for long-running tasks. Let me walk you through one common scenario of processing an uploaded video. When the video file has finished uploading to Azure Blob Storage, it will create a blob created event that gets routed to Event Grid. Event Grid is responsible for filtering that file, filtering that event, and notifying the downstream function. Azure Functions has code in it that then notifies Azure Video Indexer, which is a capability of our cognitive services to do frame-by-frame -frame analysis and metadata extraction from videos. Simultaneously, another message was routed to a queue. That queue was being monitored by a number of Azure Container instances, which had transcoding software running inside of the container. The transcoding was preparing that video file for web and mobile delivery. A customer who had exactly this scenario was Cloud9. Cloud9 is an esports company who hosts massive video game tournaments. And when their players come to play a match, those matches are recorded and then uploaded to blob storage. After the matches are over, they've transcoded the videos using a similar pipeline and made them ready for web and mobile delivery, as well as indexed them to get as much intelligence as they can about what happened during that match. And with that, I want to invite you to review some of our container storage documentation, as well as our overall Azure storage docs. And then we would like your feedback specifically on container storage. And if you go to aka.ms slash container storage survey, we'd love to hear from you. And if you're interested in data protection for Kubernetes, we'd like you to participate in that survey, AKS Backup for you. If you have any questions or you'd like to reach out to us, ask container storage at Microsoft.com and Azure Storage Feedback at Microsoft.com. I want to thank you for attending today's session, and I recommend you look at all of the IIS Storage Day sessions on storage and hear from some of my coworkers on the great innovation happening on our platform. Thank you.